I've introduced many of you to The Heart of It, which is a new resource from Strength in Words, and it's something that I call an infant enrichment curriculum. I've given you a bit of background, I've spoken about what it is, what its intended purpose is, and I've given you an opportunity to hear from a few different recipients of the curriculum about their experiences. I've told you about why I created it. So today, I want to give you a really clear sense of what it actually is to be a recipient of the heart of it, so that you can come away knowing exactly the kinds of information and experience that it is. So what is an infant enrichment curriculum and what does it look like? Well, first of all, it's called an infant enrichment curriculum, but it's really meant to enrich your experience as a parent so that you can then feel empowered and confident that you are doing your best to connect with your baby. So when you purchase the heart of it, you receive weekly enrichment modules, and those are delivered straight to your inbox. So no going anywhere, no searching on the web, no logging into anything. This is direct, accessible, no nonsense, straight to you. What this weekly enrichment module consists of is number one, a few sentences describing some aspect of development in one of four developmental domains. So either cognitive, communicative, motor, or social emotional development. And then this is then paired with a few ideas for simple play activities that really require little to no materials to support the developmental information that was presented. You can purchase the curriculum to suit your family's needs and your baby's age. So there are different packages available, zero to three months, three to six months, six to 12 months, or you can purchase the full year at once, zero to 12 months, either of course for yourself or as say a baby shower gift. You can also opt in for a monthly consultation add-on, which would give you a more personal access to me for the duration of that period. And this is really flexible. That consultation would take the form of a video or audio chat. It would allow you to ask any questions or address any specific concerns that you have about any of the modules you receive or about your baby's development. And then I would act as a resource for additional information or to help to refer you to the appropriate resource in your case. So it could also, or alternatively, take the form of enrichment sessions, and that could very well include your baby and consist of developmentally appropriate activities to support your baby's development and your confidence creating and leading those activities in your own home. Okay, so I just want to quickly give you some insight into one mother's experience with the heart of it. You heard from Alex in a previous episode, Getting to the Heart of It, and these two quotes, I think, nicely sum up a lot of what she said. So to recap, she described what it was like for her before she had access to the curriculum in her early days as a mother with her first child. She said, I found it describing motherhood, an incredibly tough experience to start off with this huge amount of love for this little man. And I wanted to just do the absolute best I could, but I felt completely at sea. And I love this image because I really, I think it's so powerful and describes those early days of parenting so singularly, that feeling of being adrift and overwhelmed especially for those of us who are accustomed to feeling empowered and in control over our lives, when all any of us want is to do the best for our babies. Now, I want to invite you to look at what she said describing her experience with the heart of it curriculum. This is her after, right? So it's so fantastic to have the heart of it curriculum with us every week, every day. It's been incredibly reassuring. It provides a toolkit and it provides an ethos. When we have these guidelines and this knowledge, it's so supportive because our children are all so different. It brought out what I already have within me. Wow. I mean, this this is really it because number one, she hit on the fact that 
what the heart of it really provides is knowledge. And that person whispering in your ear all the things that you wished you could just easily do a web search for or that you just knew inherently. And the truth is we do know so much. We do a lot of these things naturally, but having then someone say, look, here's why this is helpful. Here's actually what you're supporting when you do this simple activity with your baby, whether it's the way you're speaking, the way you're arranging your environment to give your baby access to himself and to what the objects around him, or the way you're inviting him to play with you. When you have that reassurance, it often encourages you to feel more confident in your own ability and encourages you to engage more with your baby. So I was really happy to hear that from Alex. I developed the heart of it by collecting and going through a good deal of developmental research. I took information that I found in journal articles and texts spanning the areas of early child development and those which addressed various aspects of cognitive development, communication development, motor development, and social emotional development. So I also looked at various guidelines for early learning, those sort of best practice resources for child care centers and parent education programs, both at the national level as well as at the provincial and state level in various countries. So this is really looking at early child development at an international level, the way that our babies develop all over the world. This is the science aspect. And I collected all this, put it all together, gave it a really palatable, easily digestible edge, and took that information, adding my own ideas to help parents get creative, allowing you to access the sort of artistic aspect of it. This is why I call the entire project the heart of it, because it really attempts to get to the core of things by using that mix of science and art. Now here's where things get interesting. I want to show you a few actual examples of those weekly modules that you would receive. I'll be sharing with you one representative module from each age range of the curriculum package. And that includes two modules from the six to 12 month range because that covers such a big range developmentally. So each of the modules you'll see today is also from one of the four developmental domains. So first we'll cover one from the zero to three month range which focuses primarily on motor development. Next, we'll move to the three to six month range, focusing on communication development. And lastly, we'll look at those two modules from the six to 12 month range, one of which will focus on cognitive development and one on social emotional development. So I'll be talking through each of these, but I really encourage you all who are listening to this on the podcast to visit the accompanying video I've created because there you'll get to actually enjoy the added element of a visual component where a family with a child of that exact age and developmental level is actually participating in one of the suggested activities that we're discussing at the same time. So, okay, let's start out with the first module. So this is the kind of information you'd receive, as I said, straight to your inbox. A few sentences, which won't take you more than five minutes to read, and has been really broken down for you to understand both the developmental information that's being addressed, as well as a few simple ideas for what you can do as a parent to support that development. So this one is called Room to Move, and as I said, it addresses motor development. Now, as we know, infants learn holistically, meaning that learning in one area is really inseparable from learning in another another area. So while each module addresses one area sort of primarily, your infant is also learning about all other developmental domains as well. Babies spend the early days, weeks, and months learning to move. So being confined in equipment does not allow them to do this. Other than in your arms, the safest position and most beneficial for learning about her body is laying down on a flat, firm surface. So laying down in a car seat or even in a Moses basket or bassinet for much or all of the day doesn't give her access to physical input from the environment. What you can do. Okay, so first engineer and change the environment. So you might place her on her back on a clean, firm surface and a blanket on the floor is really all you need. And this allows her to stretch or wave her arms and legs. And you might even put something like tissue paper or any crinkled paper near her hands or feet so that 
Her movements then result in the making of a sound. So another thing you might do is to place her near a shatterproof mirror where she can see herself, as she may be fascinated by watching her own movements. And yet another idea is to find a sheltered place outside, ensuring, of course, that she's warm or cool enough, and give her opportunities to spend time connecting with the fresh air, in the grass, or in the snow. And lastly, it's a great idea to start giving her opportunities for tummy time from as early on as you can. So for babies who are following a typical progression of development, this can be very shortly after they're born. Now, this module would come to you when your baby was, I think, seven weeks old, or in the case that your little one was born premature, we'd do an adjusted age based on his or her expected due date. So if you had not been doing tummy time regularly, it's not too late to start per se. Babies can benefit from as much tummy time as they can tolerate. And I actually have a podcast episode coming out in the next few months, which will be an interview with an occupational therapist and mother all about tummy time with some additional ideas and information about tummy time specifically. So once that's produced, it will be linked to this module so that you can go to it for further information. This is a good example of how the other strength and words resources really complement the heart of it curriculum. Okay, so if you're doing tummy time, you might lay down next to your baby and gently speak to her and then go to the other side or have your partner on the other side and take turns speaking her name or sing a song or say a nursery rhyme or tell her a story while you're down there on her level. And if you ever feel like you're bombarding her with sound and stimulation, maybe call her name once and then pause or wait before you speak again. And it will likely take her several seconds to respond, but if you give her time to process the sound of your voice, she may respond a few seconds later. And if she doesn't, try again or really limit your input. Okay, nice. So let's move on to the example module I have for you for a baby within the age range of three to six months. This one is called turn taking and addresses communication development. So Babies become quite interactive during this period, as opposed, of course, to the really early days when you might get a smile, maybe some eye contact, but not a whole lot more. And they start to use their voices to coo, which is using vowel sounds like ooh and ah. And we see that often start to appear around the age of three months. So you might see your baby smile and coo at you to express pleasure, to request your attention or to respond to something you said or did, right? Even really young babies are starting to communicate for lots of different social reasons. So what you can do when she communicates with her voice, with her facial expressions and or with her body, speak back to her. You might imitate her sounds or her movements or speak about what she's doing. You can pause and wait for her to initiate again. And she might do that sooner or might do it after a few seconds. And in this way, you're engaging in a back and forth conversation, taking turns as if you were talking with anyone else and teaching her the rules of how to have a conversation. Another thing you might do is to sing a song or a nursery rhyme. And when you finish, pause to watch what she does. So if you perceive that she wants you to continue the activity, and here are some specific examples, right? She smiles or giggles or wiggles her extremities. She looks directly into your eyes or coos at you, etc. And this is, of course, by no means an exhaustive list, but it's a good start to give you as the parent an idea for the kinds of things to look for. So then you might say, let's do it again. By doing that, you're modeling to her that you value her response and that you can read what she communicates to you. So again, this is primarily addressing communicative development, but also look at all of the social emotional development and even the motor development by encouraging her to move and modeling or imitating movements she's making. And you're inherently also supporting cognitive development as well and helping her to recognize that this turn-taking activity is a pattern and something you do a lot. So her brain then learns that this is something to take notice of and pay attention to. Oh, I love this beautiful interaction between this mommy and baby. Okay, let's move on to the next module, which is meant to address cognitive development specifically and is called attention maintenance. 
Babies in this 6 to 12 month age range are likely to only spend a few minutes with any single toy or activity before turning to something new. By 12 months, a particularly interesting or favorite activity may occasionally hold his attention for up to 10 minutes or so. And this is perfectly appropriate for children of this age. I think that we have a tendency to over-worry about things like attention deficit disorder in young children. And many of us as parents just don't know what normal attention at this age is supposed to look like. So I've found that things like this simple sentence can be really reassuring for many parents. So as an infant becomes more mobile, he finds more ways to experience and learn about the things and people in his environment. And I just want to point out that nowhere does it say your baby should be crawling or walking by now. There is such a wide range of normal at this age and stage, and though you may have a baby who's walking at nine months, you may also have a baby who doesn't walk until 16 months, and all of this is within the range of normal. It's also meant to be not exclusively meant for typically developing babies. If you have a child who is developmentally delayed in some area, then you too can of course benefit from something like the Heart of It curriculum. So something that pretty much all of us are experiencing is a baby who is becoming more mobile, whether that means starting to sit up or roll around or crawl or cruise or even walk, you can take this information and apply it to your family without feeling like you're a bad parent or somehow your kid is missing the boat. Okay, so your baby may move quickly from one thing to the next, making his own connections and taking in information. So parents often find that their children of this age are calm and quote unquote attentive to a screen for longer periods of time than say that aforementioned 10 minutes. But research shows that this is not a way to build a child's attention maintenance ability, as in it's not going to carry over to other activities. And the reason behind this is essentially that screen time is a passive activity. Simply watching a two-dimensional object is not an active or socially interactive activity. And what does help to extend attention, researchers have found, is open-ended play. So allowing infants the opportunity to explore different aspects of their environment in new ways without a specific agenda or without expecting them to perform a task. And that's the key to allowing your baby to learn and to stay engaged for longer periods of time. And this, of course, requires caregivers to be more active observers and also providers of sort of loose guidance rather than organizers or even teachers. And it shifts the focus to the means of play rather than the sort of end goal in the moment that we're engaging with our child. And most importantly, it requires us to be flexible. So what you can do, so you can set up items in a play area in new ways. You can give access to new or different items or in different combinations, model different ways to interact with familiar objects. You might set up a tableau in an area where your baby normally plays, right? So arrange his toys in new or silly ways to call attention to objects that he hasn't seen in relation to each other. You might also play with the materials that you have partially hidden, or maybe he has to remove them from a container. So accessing new materials allows him to explore the ways that things are similar and different to those he already knows. Maybe you might take a nature walk together and either explore natural materials in the outdoors or bring them back inside and explore them in relation to household objects. So some examples might be things like leaves or flower petals, a rock, twigs, acorns, pine cones, etc. Things that you might find regardless of whether you're located in an urban setting, deep within suburbia, or out in the country. Maybe you might play peekaboo or sing a silly song about or with new or different materials, including natural materials that you find outside. So the last enrichment module we're going to cover is also in the six to 12 month range. And this one is called processes and it focuses on social emotional development. So 
As your baby becomes more mobile and as routines become more predictable and as her understanding of words increases, especially those that are used within familiar routines, he can then predict what will happen and participate more fully in familiar events such as diapering, feeding, dressing, washing, and greeting. Because these routines occur throughout the day, every day, they offer the opportunity for important learning. So when your baby is able to participate, he often develops an understanding about his own body and he learns how to read you and your expectations. He becomes a part of that process. So as your baby learns more about his body, how to move it, how to satiate hunger and other basic needs, he's going to start to move it as he sees fit, which of course may or may not be in line with your needs. What you can do, so give him opportunities to participate in any way he can. Give words for what you're doing and try to make the experience more enjoyable. You might sing a familiar tune with words about the process of what you're doing, I found that sometimes simply shifting from speaking to singing will be enough to focus a baby's attention and calm his body. You also might provide opportunities within routines for your baby to participate at his level. Now, in the interest of time and because the accompanying video features a diapering and dressing routine, I've included only the diapering and dressing and undressing section here, but in the actual module, you would receive the following types of suggestions also for routines like feeding and washing and greeting. So here we are, you might offer a sock, a sleeve, a trouser leg, etc., in a way that suggests that you are going to put it on his body and pause near that body part, telling him, it's time to put your sock on. You might say, make a funny noise or sound as you get ready to do it, like or change your pace, doing things exaggeratedly quickly or slowly. Great, so lastly here, respond to him if he becomes frustrated. Research shows that infants who are frustrated or upset benefit greatly from a caregiver who helps them to manage their distress or frustration rather than ignoring it or simply telling him that, oh, he'll be fine. And you can explain and show what you expect from him, letting him know what you can do to help him and shifting gears to a new activity or position as soon as you're able because It may be that in this moment, he just is simply unable to focus or participate. Great, so I hope that gives you a good idea of the kinds of information the Heart of It curriculum might provide you with. In addition to your weekly modules, Each recipient of the Heart of It also has the option of participating at whatever level you're comfortable with in a private Facebook group that is available exclusively to members of the Heart of It community, both past and present. The purpose is really to connect families and to create a nice sense of community in this super weird digital world. You might find others who live near you or with common interests or backgrounds. You might find a kindred spirit or two that you can bounce experiences or questions off. You might find that you have the answer to another parent's question. It's also heavily moderated and disrespectful comments are not tolerated. So it's a really nice, respectful group of other parents going through the same things to promote that connection and help you feel less isolated, which can often happen with new parents or even seasoned parents who are moving through infancy for the second or third time. Lastly, I just want to mention that I have a very special incentive for families who sign up to be a part of the Heart of It community within the first week of the launch. So From November 2nd, when the curriculum opens, to November 9th, 2016, those who sign up will receive a digital copy of the not-yet-released album, Strength in Words, Music for Families. So this will be included in your purchase of The Heart of It. And if you've been a fan of Strength in Words in the past, you know that so much of what we do is to provide information and activity ideas through the context of musical experiences. So this is a great complement to the enrichment of your infant and to your general experience as a family. It's also 
a collection of really simple songs and nursery rhymes and chants that are meant to really just inspire you to create musical experiences at home. The only instruments I used in my recording of this album were my voice, my body, and simple DIY homemade instruments like the ones that you hear in Strength in Words podcast episodes or that you see on the Strength in Words DIY blog. So a laundry basket drum, a rice filled or cork filled container for shakers, a paper roll microphone, etc. Thanks so much for being here with me for all of this. I am so excited to launch this really special program that is so near and dear to my heart. I really feel it's my heart's work and that gives even more resonance to the name, the heart of it. So I hope that you can share this with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, and that you and your family can benefit from the heart of it curriculum. It's a great gift for any expecting parent or even a family with an infant up to say eight months. So if you find yourself wanting to give the gift of knowledge and support to any parent, this is a great way to go. Don't forget to sign up to be notified about the heart of it as we launch so that you don't miss out on any important information and feel free to contact me with any questions as strength in words. I'm Ayelet Marinovich and I'm wishing you more great moments with your family.